This woman abandoned her husband because he got cancer. Now she goes by the name Yana Fry and she's from Russia and she got married when she was 22 years old. Now apparently she wishes she never got married until age 30 and now she advises all women to not get married until 30. Wife who divorced her husband for drowning in self-pity after discovering he was dying from testicular cancer explains why she has no regrets. I'm not a horrible person. Abandoning your husband in his time of need, literally when he needs someone to care for him in his darkest moments, you walk away like a selfish piece of trash. Now a little bit of backstory as to how this actually happened. Her ex-husband, who was 15 years her senior, was diagnosed with testicular cancer three months into their marriage, and she stayed with him for another five years. Even before his diagnosis, Yana said her husband was always one to drown in self-pity, and after years of mental anguish, she called it quits, much to her in-law's disdain. I rushed into that marriage. I don't think women should marry before 30. We have no idea who we are, and we don't know what a good partner is for us, the 40-year-old explained. How does this have anything to do with age at all? I'm willing to guess that you would have absolutely no complaints if this guy didn't get cancer. Stop acting like you were young and stupid and you didn't want to marry him anyways. This is clearly someone you loved and then they got cancer and you decided to just throw that all away. And how would this change if you got married at 30? You do know that people can get cancer later in their life as well? This was literally all dumb luck. It's not because you married at 22, you flippin' delusional sociopath. Now she also says that this husband would drown in self-pity like even before the diagnosis, but I highly doubt it. There's no, actually nobody to clarify this because her husband actually died two years after she left him and I feel like this is something she definitely cooked up as like a valid reason to actually leave him. Later on she also complains about how he's so like sad about his diagnosis and he thinks about him more than her like he's thinking about himself and she basically calls him weak for it and I'm just like bitch are you serious he has cancer man what do you want him to do throw a goddamn party just like celebrate oh my god I got cancer and my wife left me this, this is awesome Yana met her husband about a year before they tied the knot and while they had a good relationship she believes it never stood a chance after he fell unwell because of the toll his illness took on them both people react in one of two ways to critical illnesses I've seen it over and over she said the first type was how my husband unfortunately was, the people who drown in self-pity. The second type of people are those who are instead concerned with everyone around them. So effectively what you're saying is that your husband should be more concerned about you than himself despite the fact that he's the one with cancer. You cannot make this up. How incredibly selfish do you have to be to actually think like this? Yes, drowning in self-pity is not the best course of action, but sometimes it is a necessary thing you need to do. There needs to be like a, a sort of grieving period. And here you are saying how he should be thinking about how to cater to your needs. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. You can't expect every man to be a goddamn anime protagonist who just oh, who's completely selfless and only thinks about everybody else. Yana reveals she married her ex-husband thinking that the pair would be together for life but her desire to have children became a problem when he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. We had a great dating experience. I definitely thought I'm marrying for life and I want babies right away, she said. Then my husband, who was 37, got diagnosed with testicular cancer when I was 22. You do realize that marriage is supposed to be for better or for worse? Meaning you don't abandon someone when they're suffering. The whole point of marrying for life is that I will stick by you in tough times and I'll be there when you need me the most. Just go admit that you're a selfish person and you want nothing to do with them. I don't know why she's made this into a whole media story and she's promoting her career about being like a life coach or something. She's basically on this media tour saying that she's not a horrible person and that all this trauma has helped her become a life coach in Singapore. The chances of people dying from testicular cancer are not as high as other types of cancer. Usually doctors tell you that unless there's some kind of big exception, you're gonna survive for quite a while. But I was worried that we wouldn't be able to have children. Yana explained that while there's a lot of support available for people when they are diagnosed, this support doesn't always extend to those around them. We got married in Switzerland, my husband was Swiss, and then we moved to New York. He was working for a company who transferred him there, she said. I was learning English at the time. I had no friends, no relatives. I was in total isolation with no support system. If you notice, the way that she talks, it's all about her, okay? There was no support system for her. 
Screw the husband, right? The lack of self-awareness is laughable, honestly. She says she moved to New York with no support system in total isolation. Imagine how the husband feels right now. Yana said that at the time, society was less aware of mental health, so much so that even medical professionals never asked how she was coping. I was in a state of shock when I first heard the diagnosis. It took me six months to be able to even say the word cancer. Oh, the medical professionals never asked how you were doing. Oh, sorry that they were concerned with the goddamn cancer patient. Obviously, they're not going to cater to the person who's not the goddamn patient. That There's therapy for those things, okay? It's not the job of the goddamn doctors. It took you six months to even say the word cancer? What kind of bullshit is that? Are you just making that up? What? You have the audacity to call him weak when you can't say a flippin' word. Honestly, I'm not buying it. Unless you went into mental shock or some sort of paralysis that's been diagnosed, I'm not buying it. You couldn't say a word for six months? We saw different kinds of doctors not a single person ever offered me help. They never asked, do you need a support system? Are you part of a counseling group? Can you get over yourself? Holy shit. If you need therapy, go get therapy yourself. You're a fully functioning adult. It's not like you have cancer. <laughs> it wasn't until that fifth year that I started to think about leaving. I totally believe you. But I felt like I couldn't say anything. Boo hoo, let me, let me pay you a song on the world's smallest violin. It was very clear to me that if I didn't save myself, I was probably going to die. <laughs> Why is she acting like she's the one with cancer? You, you cannot make this up. This actual victim status is is nuts. So Yana made the decision to divorce her dying ex-husband and it was an understandably difficult time for both of them. His main focus was more and more so about him. At the beginning of this treatment, he was still checking on me. He felt even more pity for himself because of the divorce, she said. His main focus was him and not me. Wow, maybe he's uh, focused on surviving his goddamn life. Victim card activated again. People sent me horrible messages. I don't want to call it hatred, but it was close to that. People were in pain and they wanted to blame someone. His family were so disappointed. Her former in-laws were so disappointed, she says, that they didn't inform Yana of his passing two years later, even though he had been remarried. So he died two years later. You couldn't even spend the last two years of his life with him. You chose to abandon him in his darkest times, in his last moments. And now you're acting surprised that his in-laws didn't want anything to do with you. Yana eventually found out about her ex-husband's passing on Facebook. There's a picture of him from a common friend and it said, rest in peace. My first reaction was, you must be joking. Someone would have called me and told me, but no one did. I had to have years of therapy to learn that I'm not a horrible person for making the decision that I did. I was so happy and so thrilled and so relieved that he got remarried before the end. I genuinely hope they had a beautiful life together. They got remarried because he was about to die, you idiot. Of course nobody told you. They all recognize that you are a horrible person. Also, shout out to that therapist apparently just gaslighting you into telling you that you're not a bad person. Then somehow she turns it into a woman thing. Like, I feel we, especially women, are just brought usually brought up with this mentality to serve others but when you go against it you learn a lot about resilience and self-awareness she said what are you talking about resilience self-awareness you have none of these you're a poor excuse for a wife a bad lover and a sad pathetic attempt at a human being click this video or i eat my fingers Ow.